Hey y'all, I Rick Sky here, and within this video, I'm going to explain step by step how to install Google Wi-Fi for AT&T UVerse. So that's right, it's AT&T UVerse high-speed internet, and taking that and replacing it with Google Wi-Fi. Now, when I say replace, there's a common misconception that that people purchase Google Wi-Fi and it replaces AT&T UVerse. It does not. It replaces the Wi-Fi functionality of AT&T UVerse. And it also becomes your, uh, the Google Wi-Fi becomes your firewall. So people from the outside world, if they try to hack your network, they're gonna have to go through that Google Wi-Fi first. So we're gonna go through this step by step. A few things I want you to do before we begin is uh, number one, make sure that your AT&T Universe is currently connected and make sure that you uh, that you can access the internet from a computer connected to your AT&T Universe because we don't want to modify anything yet. And let's take it a step further and if you don't already know the IP address, check your documentation from AT&T Universe and see if you've got it. It may be 192.168.1.254. That seems to be the somewhat uh, standard default IP that AT&T uses for their UVerse gateway. Because we're going to have to access that here in a minute and uh, step through some configurations. So confirm your internet is working, confirm you've got a computer currently connected to your AT&T UVerse, and then let's proceed. Don't connect anything, don't take your, your Google Wi-Fi out of the box. If you have that's fine because you're probably catching this video a little bit later, but don't, don't plug it in or, or power it on or any of that yet. So let's take a look at the AT&T UVerse. Now I'm kind of a nerd, so I've got a, uh, a somewhat unique setup. You can see here I've got a gigabit switch, and then I've got an old gigabit switch that died because it got too hot, and then I've got my patch panel down there. But in its most simplistic form, you're probably just going to have this box. This is the AT&T UVerse. This is the one I'm using. And right here, and they happen to be yellow, but I got four ports. So anything that's in there now, keep it connected. Because again, the first step that you should have performed was making sure that, uh, that your internet currently works and you've got a computer currently connected to UVerse. So the next step is to go to your computer that's connected to AT&T UVerse. And when you do within your web browser, and I'm using a Mac, you may be using Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer, if you're using a PC, but I'm using Safari on a Mac, type in your AT&T UVerse Gateways IP address here. And again, it may be 192.168.1.254. After you type in your UVerse Gateways IP, you should come to a menu that looks like this. The first thing to do on this first page is scroll down where it says Home Network Devices and either pull out your smartphone and take a photo or jot down all of these device names. Now depending upon how many people have connected to your Wi-Fi network, the device could be somewhat large or it could be short, but it's important to make note of everything that currently appears before we perform the next step. So the next step after you've jotted all of that down is to take your Google Wi-Fi out and uh, you know in the bottom plug in the power and then plug in the network cable to the WAN port, Whiskey Alpha November. That's the port on the bottom of the Google that has the little world icon. And again, there will be two ports on the bottom of the Google, but you want to use the one with the world icon. So plug the cable into that, and then plug the other end of the cable into the, one of the yellow ports on your AT&T UVerse. Now with your Google Wi-Fi plugged in, what I want you to do is go back to your, uh, to your AT&T UVerse page and hit refresh. And what you want to look for is a new device. So the previous step you either jotted down or, or snapped a screenshot of everything that appeared there. So look for whatever's new. There should be one device and that should be your Google Wi-Fi. And it may be towards the bottom of the list. So once you see that new device, jot down the name or take a photo of it with your camera, with your smartphone. 
And just make sure you know that's the Google Wi-Fi. Now the next step is super important. Uh, the next step is scrolling to the top of your AT&T UVerse interface. Go to Settings. Go to Firewall. Go to Application Pinholes and DMZ. Scroll down on this list and find the device that you jotted down that, that's your Google Wi-Fi. So once you find it, click it within this list. In my case, it's the one on the very bottom because it was the most recent device uh, that I connected. And then once you've clicked that, scroll down to the bottom and check this option. It says allow all applications DMZ plus mode. So once you've placed a check in there, click save. And it may take a moment or so to save. So just be patient. The next step is to go to LAN, L-A-N. Then go to LAN IP address allocation. Once you're at LAN IP address allocation, you're going to want to scroll down and find your device, find your Google Wi-Fi. And it may depending upon how many devices you have, it may not appear. And this was a point of failure I had at first because I didn't see it. Well, AT&T conveniently, right at the beginning of this list, has a next button. It says next, very small. So there's actually, depending upon how many devices you have, there may be multiple pages of results. So in my case, I have to click next to get to my Google Wi-Fi. And then when I scroll down, we can see the last one is my Google Wi-Fi. So for your Google Wi-Fi, what you're going to want to do is check a few things. Device status needs to say DMZ device. Firewall needs to be disabled. Address assignment needs to be public. Select WAN IP mapping. WAN IP mapping needs to be router WAN IP address default. And if you see all those settings, you don't have to change anything. But if they don't look just like that, you need to change them to look, look just like this. And then click Save. The next step is to unplug the power from your AT&T UVerse gateway. And the power right here is just a little cable on the bottom. So just pull it out. And then wait about two minutes. Unplug the power from your Google Wi-Fi. It's on the bottom. Just lift it up, unplug your power, and wait about another two minutes. At this point in time, the power is unplugged from both the AT&T UVerse and the Google Wi-Fi. So, you know, just give it a few minutes. You can wait two minutes. You can wait a little bit longer if you want to. What this is going to do is ensure that the, uh, that the settings that we applied have taken effect. So after waiting about two to four minutes, how long you want to wait, and this sequence is important, plug the power back in to your UVerse. Now after plugging it in, wait, I'd wait about three or four minutes. After waiting three or four minutes, plug the power back in for your Google Wi-Fi. And let's wait about two or three minutes. Now what I want you to do is get your, uh, get your smartphone. In my case, I use an iPhone. You may be using an Android. It's all good. I love Google and I love Apple equally well. So grab your device, launch your Google Wi-Fi app, and now it's just a matter of following the instructions within the Google Wi-Fi app. So that, that was the intuitive part. But if you just... If you just purchased Google Wi-Fi like I did and you didn't perform the steps that we just performed within the same sequence that I illustrated, it's probably not going to work correctly. So I hope this video is of value. Again, I found Google Wi-Fi to be awesome. 
I really like being able to pair multiple uh, Google Wi-Fi devices to create a mesh network. It's been super convenient. And I hope it works well for you too. And again, this was with AT&T U-verse, and that's the equipment I was using. A few final steps that you may choose to perform, and this depends upon how complex. Hold on one second. I got to I got to stop this recording here. Had the screen recording going of uh, the screen recording portion. That file was going to get really big. So, depending upon how complex your uh, your network is, you may also have wired devices. If you do have wired devices, keep in mind that what you're going to want to do now is there's a second port in the bottom of your Google Wi-Fi. It's not the WAN, it's the LAN, the Lima Alpha November. So from that port, if you had wired devices, you would want to run a patch cable to a network switch. And you can find a link, check the link within this video's description. You can find uh, network switches, you can find the Google Wi-Fi and all of this stuff I'm talking about. But basically what, what's happened, now your Google Wi-Fi has become the router. You know, even though your AT&T U-verse is still powered on, and even though your AT&T U-verse is still deli delivering internet access, your Google Wi-Fi is now taking over the role of the router. So it's, it's the first thing that, uh, that anybody from the internet, if they were gonna hit your network, they would hit the Google Wi-Fi. And likewise, when you're connecting wirelessly using your devices, you're now using that Google Wi-Fi for your wireless connection, which leads me to the next thing. So if you're using wired devices, you've now got to plug in those wired devices to the LAN port. If it's just one device, plug it into the LAN port. If it's multiple wired devices, get a switch. Again, check the link within this video's description. You can find switches there. Get you a switch, plug the switch into the LAN port on Google Wi-Fi, and then plug your wired devices into the switch. Another step you may want to perform is disabling Wi-Fi on your AT&T U-verse because now you're using Google Wi-Fi. So using AT&T Wi-Fi is, is of no value. So, so to disable your old AT&T U-verse Wi-Fi, go into your AT&T U-verse router, then go to Wi-Fi, And then once you're in Wi-Fi, to disable Wi-Fi, select Wi-Fi interface and set to disabled. If you have guest network enabled, set it to disabled. And also for the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi radio configuration, set Wi-Fi interface to disabled. Once you've done that, click save, wait a few minutes, and then using a device, see if you can still uh, see if you can still see your AT&T U-verse Wi-Fi. You probably you probably won't uh, now that that's been uh, now that that's been disabled. One final thing I wanted to say is that after this is all set up, I would highly encourage you to explore the Google Wi-Fi app. I found it to be really neat. I found a lot of devices on my home network, not just wired but also wireless that I didn't know existed. So it's a great way to audit what's connected and then go through and verify that device. Most devices on the hardware itself has what's called a MAC address on it. If it doesn't, you can connect to the device and it'll usually show you the MAC address and or IP address. And you can cross-reference what's on the device or what's found within the device and then look within your Google Wi-Fi app and name everything accordingly. That way, at a quick glance, you can see everything that's connected to your Google Wi-Fi, and if there's something that you're not familiar with, it could be a, a potential security issue. So that's, uh, that's worth mentioning. But keep in mind, if there's something you haven't powered on for a while, it could all of a sudden pop up in, uh, in the Google Wi-Fi app and kind of confuse you. And actually, I ran into, uh, when I was setting mine up, I ran into something unexpected. I have, uh, I have DirecTV, and I've got two rooms but one room only has Wi-Fi. It doesn't have the, uh, the wire jack in the device, but it was showing my other room as, uh, as a wired device connected. And I'd looked through all my network ports and I, didn't, I couldn't find anything else. But for whatever reason with DirecTV, even though that was a secondary device that did not have a Cat5 jack on it, it was still being identified as, by Google Home as, having, uh, as, as being a wired device. 
So to, to verify that, I went into DirecTV settings, looked at the MAC address, and sure enough, actually I just flipped over the box and looked at the MAC address on the DirecTV box, and sure enough, that MAC address matched up with what Google Wi-Fi was identifying as a wired device. And I guess it was identifying it as a wired device because the, uh, you know, the primary DirecTV box is wired. But anyway, that was a useful discovery. There's a lot of stuff that you can explore within the, within the Google Wi-Fi app, and that's topic for another conversation. This was just how to, uh, how to connect Google Wi-Fi to AT&T Uverse Internet. Hope this video is of value. If it was, uh, please consider giving me a thumbs up. Share this video with others. If you want to support the channel, it would be great. Check the link within this video's description to expand this video's description. And there's a link to support Irix Guy on Patreon. Again, 100% voluntary. You don't have to, but if this really helped and you're like giggly and happy about it and want to want to support me, check it out. Support Irix Guy on Patreon if you choose to do so. Uh, likewise, if you're looking for Google Wi-Fi and or other accessories, Nest, whatever, check the link within this video's description. I've got it listed there. Really cool products. I've had a lot of fun with it already, and uh, it's just it's it's great hardware. It is really great hardware in my opinion. So thanks again for watching, and be sure to subscribe, youtube.com forward slash iRickSky. Y'all have a good day. Hey, y'all, iRickSky here. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and share. It's viewers like you that enable my channel to continue to grow. Thank you.